Welcome to tonight's uh, Policy Pizza and a Pint. I'm Robert Ermel. I'm the Director of Operations for the Natural Institute for Policy Research. And to find out more about their institute, uh, check out the information at your tables, our website, YouTube channels there. Um, in particular, if you're looking about this year's event, and you're wondering, after these people have talked, why they didn't tell you exactly how the budget is made, you can go back to our YouTube channel and see our last year's event on the budget, where you can see some former deputies talking about their experiences. So feel free to check that out. So last year, we shed light on the provincial budget for one lens. This year, we're looking at a different panel. And this panel will talk about how the budget impacts various groups, and both from the inside and outside, how balanced budget legislation affects the budget, um, how NGOs um, and businesses prepare for the budget, both before and after, and how the media um, sees the budget. So our moderator this evening is Dr. Sharon Sanford, Perspectives and Policy Editor, the Winnipeg Free Press. And on our panel this evening, we have Dr. Wayne Simpson, Professor in Economics at the University of Manitoba, Mr. Lauren Remillard, Executive Vice President at the Winnipeg Chamber of Commerce, and Mr. Chris Glover, Legislative Reporter for CBC News. You can find their detailed biographies uh, on your tables as well. So uh, one thing I will ask you to do is to fill your feedback for us. Many of our event ideas come from you. The things that you want to hear are the things we can put together. So please fill those out and let us know. I'm going to pass the mic to Shannon and she'll get us going for tonight's event. Enjoy. Great. Well, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. We're going to go and uh, in no particular, we'll probably just we'll go with you for this call, right? To, uh, to talk about uh, just sort of an overview, uh, five to ten minutes, I think we, we said we'd give you, and then I'm going to pull a book and pick you up. Then we're going to go into sort of general questions, and then we'll take questions from the floor. So I leave it first uh, with you. You can open up the show. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> it feels like a lounge singer or something. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I thought I would. Uh, not talk about politics, I'll leave that to other people. Uh, I'll talk sort of about the uh, environment in which the budget's being made and uh, what I see as some of the uh, challenges that are involved. And these are really challenges, uh, I've got the tight little blocker here, but the challenges are both long run and short run. There's some long run challenges around uh, uh, getting the growth in revenues and the growth in expenditures to uh, balance out in some fashion. And then there's also some short-run uh, challenges around uh, the inevitable cyclical downturns in uh, GDP and, out and revenues that are going to come in the future just as they've come in the past. Of course, we saw that in 2008-2009. Uh, so I just, uh, what I really did was I took the uh, Auditor General's last report, which looked at a decade of data on uh, debts and deficits and so on, that revenues and expenditures, added last year's uh, report, annual report from the province, and I uh, plotted them and looked at the trends. And you can see that uh, total revenue growth around 4% a year over this period, and you know, it's fairly uh, fairly steady. Um, old revenue growth 4.3%, federal transfer growth a little bit less at 3.4%. And this is perhaps one of the challenges in the sense that um, the uh, transfer growth is dominated, 50% of it is uh, equalization. Equalization is periodically uh, renegotiated. There's been some hand-wringing about whether Manitoba in the long run will uh, lose out in that process, get less uh, equalization payments in the past. And with the downturn in oil prices, uh, with a couple of years lag, that is going to start to affect uh, our revenues probably in 16, 17. So just after the next election, I think there's probably a nasty surprise coming uh, along with the kinds of surprises that Alberta, for example, got this year. Um, then on the uh, expenditure side, the uh, total expenditure is growing at 4.9%, uh, program expenditure 5.2%, which is most of it, and then the debt charge is relatively small at the bottom, growing relatively slowly. I have to hold this up more. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, here, the program expenditures, of course, again, there are some challenges because about two-thirds of those program expenditures are what are often referred to as the core services of health and education, and uh, 
it's pretty hard to conceive of drastic cuts to the growth in program expenditures without changes in, in health and, and education cuts. And in work I did with Jared Wesley, uh, looking into the responses to the last recession, it was quite clear that most provinces were very reluctant to make those kinds of uh, changes to what they identify as core services. And of course, there are other, some other core services that can't be neglected for too long, in particular infrastructure spending. So the, uh, the whole question arises as to the structural deficit, um, because with program expenditures going up at over 5% a year, and total revenue growth only 4%, and some upside dangers to program expenditures, some downside dangers to own revenue growth and revenue growth in general, uh, you can see that, uh, in fact, uh, it's going to be difficult to get these two uh, to align. And that's sort of the long-run problem I was alluding to, which is that uh, you need to watch in the budget to see how the government is trying to uh, cope with these problems. There's some evidence that they've, they've gotten some control of this in the last uh, budget or two, but that's still an ongoing challenge. And in, in addition to that, in the short term, you can see that there are also some challenges because what's going to happen in the near term again is that we're going to face uh, another cyclical downturn. These things are inevitable, uncertain in terms of their magnitude, but the last one wasn't really all that uh, strong. And you can see, for example, here that in fact, if this is our 0% revenue growth, we only had the one year where revenue growth was actually negative, very modestly negative. We didn't have the kinds of uh, damaging effects on the provincial revenue growth that we saw in some other provinces, and especially in the U.S. And a lot of the discussion of the, of the last recession and how severe it was is really about other, other places than Manitoba. But just looking at this period from 07, 08 to 11, 12, there was a pretty dramatic uh, change in our, our fortunes in terms of, uh, of uh, the deficit and debt growth and so on, because revenue growth during that four-year period was about 7%, but expenditure growth was around 20%. And so we have the uh, kind of defi deficit problems the government's now uh, facing. And that's something that's likely to return, and indeed it could return in a more drastic way in a future recession, because the recessions in the 80s and 90s were significantly more severe than this one because they were uh, sharper and they lasted longer. So we have net debt rising at the moment and that um, is a problem that uh, may or may not be as serious as we think it is in the sense that our ability to pay is often best measured by not uh, the net debt but net debt to GDP ratio. So the alternative to this is to think about the debt to GDP ratio and to see how we can stabilize that. But again, even if we allow debt to grow at a slower rate than GDP growth, so that the debt to GDP ratio levels off and then begins to fall again, it still requires us to think about how we're going to get our long-term balance between expenditures and revenues under control and how we're going to deal with the next recession. And of course, part of that is about uh, balanced budget legislation and whether, in fact, uh, it's ever going to be effective in uh, dealing with uh, cyclical downturns, um, which I can address if people are uh, interested as well. I think I've probably exhausted my 10 minutes, so I'll, I'll stop there.